Raider Nation, thank you for joining us on the Only Nation podcast, brought to you by the Raider Ramble. My name is Heidi, but you may know me as Kevlar Prom Dress or even Raider Ladybug. I'm here with Raider Homer and T3 Raider Facts, and we're ready to talk some Raiders football together. Always ready to talk Raider football. Hey, the draft is almost here, and we're going to break it down for you, so let's go. Today on the show... We'll take a look at what the Raiders have done over the past couple of weeks as we gear up for the upcoming draft. All right, Raider Nation. This is the Only Nation podcast, and we want to hear from the Only Nation. So here's how you can get in touch with us. Give us a call by calling 904-701-8667. That's 904-701-8667. You can leave us a voicemail or send us a text. Here's the latest Raider news. On April 21st, the league announced that clubs had passed the proposed rule to expand jersey number options for certain positions, along with eliminating overtime in the preseason. This clears the way for players like Trevon Mullen to rock single-digit numbers, if the team permits them to do so. And that's just when you thought you had your favorite player's jersey and number. Exactly. That was my first thought. Like, man, I am so glad I don't buy these new players' jerseys anymore because that's a waste of money. Uh, that's, I mean, that's 100 bucks a pop. You know, and if these players change their jersey, you got to go, what are you going to do, go buy another one? Like, I don't know. Whatever. I guess you have some collectibles. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it sucks for the people that, you know, bought the jerseys that the, when they were drafted and now they might change. It'll be kind of cool seeing some of those players who can who are able to wear the numbers they had in college. But uh, you're right. Other than that, it's just people having to spend more money to buy the number of the jersey of their favorite player. The almighty dollar is God. Is the NFL. Last week, the Raiders general manager, Mike Mayock, had his pre-draft press conference. In it, Mayock talked about the difficulty of getting to know players virtually through the limits created by the pandemic, and also evaluating the players who haven't played any games since 2019. You can find a breakdown of the entire press conference from Raiders reporter Levi Edwards on Raiders.com, and it will also be in our show notes. You know, I really like Mike Mayock, and, and I have to give him credit. Coming out of the gate, he made a lot of really, really good picks in 2019. Last year, not so much. So I'll look at this year as the redemption draft. We need to have at least two to three, maybe even four uh, starters out of this year's draft. That may sound like a lot, but we really have to start hitting on these picks consistently in order to really say that Mayock is a good general manager and that this franchise is really heading in the right direction. You know, uh, his first draft, it was great. Uh, Last year's not so much, as you just said, but at the same time, it's like, you know, we also just talked about not, them not being able to really get to know these players. Like, that's big. You know, that's important. Again, I'm not trying to apologize or, you know, yes, I am being a homer, I guess. But at the same time, it's like Mayock is coming in for the first time as a GM. His first draft, he hit, he, he did well. You know, these the next draft, you know, COVID. This draft, COVID. You know, so, I mean, I think the jury's still out overall because, you know, COVID. You know what I mean? That was a major thing. It changed the entire way, uh, the way that the NFL was ran. Uh, all that pre uh, combines, all that. All you're getting is the pro day workouts. That's just not enough. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had all that other stuff in place before COVID. So, I'm just. This makes me want to be a little bit more patient with Mike Mayock because I do believe in the guy, and I think that he's going to be a really good GM. Uh, it's just that now, you know, we have to make these adjustments amidst COVID. I have more faith in Mayock than I do Gruden. It's just that Gruden will get the, all the benefit of the doubt. May- Mayock will be the fall guy. When it comes down to it, we all know who really, truly is making the picks. Exactly. After Maurice Hurst and Arden Key were released by the Raiders, both of whom were later picked up by the Niners, by the way, the Raiders added to their defensive backfield by picking up cornerback Rasul Douglas. Listed as 6'2", 209 pounds, Douglas was a third-round pick by the Eagles in 2017 
and spent three seasons in Philadelphia, and then last year he played with the Carolina Panthers. Douglas has appeared in 60 games with 29 starts over his first four seasons, compiling 180 tackles, 145 of them were solo, including 10 for loss, 5 interceptions, and 34 passes defensed. He brings not only depth, but also experience to the back end of Gus Bradley's defense. I'm still a believer in Arnett and Mullen. Uh, I think this is a good signing, but, you know, I'm not really excited about it. Uh, I think that uh, with Gus Bradley, Mullen's going to play a lot better. Arnett's going to play a lot better. And I know that Carl Joseph at strong safety wasn't necessarily a strong point in the offense, but I believe he's going to be moving to free safety where I think he will be really good. And once you have that free safety and that cover three defense that can help these cornerbacks when they're in man coverage, you know, uh, we're going to, I think that's going to help tremendously. And then also with all the defensive tackles that we signed, somebody in there's got to show up right this year, start getting m- bigger sacks. You know, Max Crosby seemingly fell off last year, had one last sack than uh, Khalil Mack with a uh, torn um, you know, ligament in his shoulder and in a, in a fractured uh, minor fracture in his finger or whatever, you know, and it's just, uh, he, uh, I think that, with Bradley, you know, this defense is just going to make a 180 and really start to play well and get into the top 16th. And Douglas, uh, I think he's just going to be that competitive type of player that we're bringing in to bring competition, you know, to these younger guys. They always try to bring in these uh, veterans to show these young guys how to play. And I think this guy, Rashul Douglas, is that type of player. But I still believe in Arnett and I still believe in Mullen. You see, I was really excited about this signing for the same reason I was excited about them signing Prince and Luthamara last year, who never even made it uh, much into camp. Uh, We need, well, I say we, the Raiders desperately need somebody who has got a lot of experience, and this guy's got playoff experience as well, because in the COVID year, as you know, you definitely need to rely on the older, more experienced veterans as well as the coaching staff. Now, it's going to be a completely different scheme, uh, under Gus Bradley, but you still need that experienced defensive back to help coach up those younger guys. Now, will Russell Douglas make the 53 man at the end? Maybe, probably, but again, it's not a set thing, but I think he definitely is going to help along everybody on the, on the uh, defensive backfield side, particularly Damon Arnett. I think Arnett's going to benefit a lot this year from having that additional camp plus a veteran like uh, Russell Douglas barking into his ear. And the NFL has announced that the 2021 schedule will be released on May 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern. It will be released on the NFL Network, NFL.com, and the NFL app. NFL.com and the NFL app will provide complete team-by-team and weekly schedules of all regular season games, listing opponents, sites, and times. This year's schedule will feature a 17th regular season game and only three preseason games for the first time ever. The Raiders' extra opponent this year will be the Chicago Bears. Now, this is like Christmas time for me. Now they're so closely packed together. You've got the draft, and then you turn right around, and you've got to release the schedule. This is like Christmas to me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that schedule. I would love to go to the home opener, um, hopefully get into the game, but I just love going to the home opener, so I'm excited to see when I'm going to be able to go back to Vegas for another home opener. Uh, you know, and the team, the 17 uh, game schedule, I uh, mean, I'm, I'm thinking that that can help us get into the playoffs. You know, if we'd maybe had one more game last year, you know, considering, you know, the, we, we, you know, you never know. Sometimes these one games might help us out, you know, and that's what I'm hoping for. And then, uh, you know, we're playing the Bears. Um, I'm a little worried about that, right? We don't have Trent Brown. That was like the only game I think that stood out in my mind that he played when he shut out Khalil Mack. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen with that because we cannot let Khalil Mack come back and destroy us. If Chicago has Andy Dalton under center, I am not worried. Good point. Good point. Okay, then. Let's talk draft. What are the Raiders going to do in round one and round two? What should they do in rounds one and one two? Why don't we start off with asking, who do we want them to pick in round one? Assuming most of the people that are supposed to be available at 17 are still available. Omar, you want to take that one first? In the first round, I got us taking Elijah Vera Tucker. 
You know, I think that uh, Gruden has proven that he wants to build from the trenches out. And uh, Colton Miller just got re-signed. Uh, Brandon Parker is not quite working out. Of course, we got Denzel Good, but I'd rather him be at the guard spot. So I definitely see them taking an offensive tackle. And on my little mock draft, I got three uh, offensive linemen going ahead of Elijah Vera Tucker. So I think that's who we will end up with at the 17th overall pick. And is that who you think the Raiders should pick? Well, yeah. I mean, I was reading up his reports. I liked his size. I really liked his ability. I liked the reports. I mean, but, like, look, this is a guessing game, right? Okay. Uh, who all saw Cleveland Farrell, you know, coming to us? We were talking about that in the green room. You know what I mean? So I'm just reading the reports, and I say, okay. I actually this did. This is kind of who I, who I like. This is all based on who I like. And I think I probably agree with a lot of what, the talking heads have been saying associated with Raider Nation in round one, I think we definitely need to fill that tackle slot. Uh, Elijah Vera Tucker, I would love to have him. I think he'll already be off the board. So I think it comes down to either Darisaw or Tevin Jenkins. Now, I've, I've been liking Ter- Tevin Jenkins from day one. I think he's a mauler. I think he's big. He's a beast. I think he's really going to help dominate that running game. And he's somebody who is already used to playing right tackle, who I think is going to be more of a plug-and-play guy. So I think if you draft Kevin Jenkins, you've got a natural fit in there in round one, and that solves that problem. Then in round two, I think you've got a, your choice of whoever's on the board between Javon Holland and uh, Richie Grant uh, to fill that safety spot. So I think if, I think you go tackle, fill that need for the first round, and then you go after a safety in round two. Yeah, that's what I got at round two is a safety, but I got Hassan Nasseradine. How do you say that, T3? Because I know I didn't say it right. Nasseradine. Nass- Nasseradine. Yes, another name that I'm not going to be able to say on this podcast, but I liked his reports too, you know, so I hope, I think we're going with a, a safety in the second round as well. Well, if we draft him, if, if we draft him, I'll help you come up with a shortened name for him. That'll How about work. that? And because we can't pronounce his name, that means he is the one that will be drafted. <laughs> Absolutely. It's just the way things go. And actually, I'm going to go, uh, I agree with you, T3. If we pick at 17, I see us. I think we should, and I would really like for us to pick Tevin Jenkins. You actually sold me on him weeks ago, and all the reasons that you just listed. And I am not sure they'll do it. But I think they should do it. There is a very strong case to be made for safety uh, in round one. There's a strong case to be made for uh, trading up for Patrick Sertan in the backfield. I wouldn't be disappointed if we got Trevor Mooring. Um, but... Th- I, I don't think the, the Raiders are even set on uh, if they are going to be trading up or down or if they're staying in place. I think they really don't know what they're going to do yet. They do know what they're going to do. I think they're going to sit tight. I think that's what they've proven to do. You know what I mean? They'll trade. They'll move around a little bit, I believe, you know, if they do in the later rounds. You know what I mean? But I, I don't think they're going to move in the in the early rounds. Uh, they made a bunch of moves in the offseason, man. They want to go get guys, the best guy on the board, uh, to, to fill these last remaining holes that they have. Of course, we still got, you know, cuts coming up and all this and that, but I think they want to go grab the young guys that they want to fill these holes right now and then see what happens after the final cuts and all that, all that and then, uh, you know, put together a team. But I think they, I, they damn sure know what they want to do. Yeah, I just hope that they don't trade back and try to accumulate more picks because more picks is not what we need. We need we need better talent. We don't need more picks. We need better talent. And I do not think they know what they want yet. We know. I don't. I, I don't think they do. And all of this um, whispering and gossip that you hear coming out from, you notice there hasn't been that much. It's almost as if they know that if they try to leak a tip that it's nobody's going to jump on it because everyone knows nobody knows what we're going to do yet. Just my opinion. 
I think everybody's trying to scoop the Raiders because of all the teams, the Raiders are the one team that will pull a pick out of nowhere. And, and people will say, that's a classic Raiders pick. He, <laughs> he, made, he ran a 4.2 in the, in the 40. Obviously, he was the first round pick. So I think people clown on the Raiders all the time, but, that, but they've given us the opportunity to be clowned on. The first human to run a sub 440. Oh, definitely pick. Definitely pick. Okay, and enough of that discussion. How about we get a little bit more discussion with Heidi's High Five? And now it's time for another Heidi's High Five. All right, here is this week's version of Heidi's High Five with five guys, not the hamburger joint, Five guys to keep an eye on during the course of the 2021 NFL Draft. Number one, there's been talk about the Raiders trading up in round one of the draft. Well, I would totally be in favor of that if the guy the Raiders are targeting is Alabama cornerback Patrick Sertain. Now, if New England trades up to eight to get their quarterback, and then if Denver passes on Sertain at nine, he would then fall into the Cowboys' lap at ten. And that's where I would make my move. So the question is, what would it take to get Sertain away from the Cowboys, and would it be worth the cost? And my answer to that would be yes. Number two, assuming that the Raiders have both their offensive tackle and safety positions covered in rounds one and two, let's shift to round three. The Raiders have two picks back-to-back, and one of them could potentially be a quarterback. Davis Mills or Kellen Mond, if they fall, or maybe Jamie Newman. After having not drafted a quarterback in either of the last two drafts, I think Gruden needs to test the waters this year. The other third-round pick should probably focus on the defensive line. Guys who could potentially be there include Florida State's Marvin Wilson, Indiana's Jerome Johnson, Tyler Shelvin out of LSU, and my sleeper pick of the draft, Louisiana Tech defensive tackle Milton Williams. Number three, in the fourth round, you're looking at building depth in a couple of different areas. Ulrich Jackson, the offensive tackle out of Iowa, could be a good direction to go, as could defensive end Janarius Robinson out of Florida State. But, and Homer, you're going to like this one, there is a running back out of Oklahoma named Ramondre Stevenson who has that size and speed that we all love and who could become that power back that we've been missing. If he's there in round four, I'm gobbling him up. Remember the name, Ramondre Stevenson. Number four, round five, once again, building for depth. Last year, I talked about Georgia guard Solomon Kinley, who was drafted two spots after the Raiders picked John Simpson. This year, I'm looking again at another Georgia guard. This year, it's Ben Cleveland. So keep his name in mind. And number five, so if you really like your Clemson guys and you really want to tack on to that receiving core, I've got two guys for you who should both be available late in the draft, both out of Clemson. Cornell Powell, and Amari Rogers. So keep an eye out for both of these guys. Okay, there's a deep dive on the draft, and that is this week's version of Heidi's High Five. All right, thank you, T3. Touched on a little bit of what I mentioned, and I'll be honest, I got some of what I mentioned out of what you said. (laughs) (laughs) Um. I would love for us to get Patrick Sertain. That would... That, that would, would make my draft. Yeah, that would be a dream come true. I, I don't expect it, um, but it is a possibility. I, know, I don't think he goes... I don't think he slips down further than 10, but he, he is the Cowboys guy. So the Cowboys are definitely going to gobble him up unless there's some way we could work out a trade. But if we do, I'm just concerned about will we give up too much in order to get him. I'd, I'd like to be patient, you know. Again, like I said, I like Mullen. I like Arnett. And we just signed Douglas. You know, there's still other players out there. But I think we should hang out and hope that Asante Samuel Jr. falls to us in the third round. You know, I know he's a little undersized, but he can, you know, he's got good cover skills. And he could be that uh, slot cornerback that we're looking for. And I think that if we got a good slot cornerback... You know, we feel uh, Carl Joseph can do his job and our defensive line can do their job. You know, I think we can, we can get away with a rookie like Asante Samuel in there. Or maybe even, uh, what's the kid's name? 
and that we, we drafted last year. A Meek, or maybe even a Meek Robertson. Or, oh, Meek Robertson. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. Maybe even a Meek Robertson. You know, he might be able to step up this year, but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping Asante Samuel will fall to us in the third round. And then you were talking about uh, a running back. I don't really want us to take a running back because we got uh, Kendrick Lamar. What's that? Kid? Oh, damn, I can't think of anybody's name right now. Uh, Kendrick Drake. Ken, yeah, Kendrick. I, I don't know about Kendrick taking Hurts. a running back like that because we got Kenyon Drake. But I wanted to get uh, a backup safety because when Alec Ingold uh, got hurt, that really hurt our run game. So I was thinking in round six, we could hope, hope that uh, Spencer Brown will fall to us. You know, he's uh, not too fast, but he's a pretty solid running back. And, uh, you know, he, a lot of reports have him being converted to a fullback. So he could be somebody that can help us in short uh, yardage downs, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, re- re- have uh, supply us with the backup fullback. I want us to quit reaching on picks. I want us to just go with a wham, bam, home run, thank you, ma'am, pick. And if that means moving up in the draft to do it, then do it. I don't think we're there yet, though. You know, we're always talking about falling back. We never fall, but we, we never go ahead. We always maybe fall back or we stay put. It's kind of funny. You look at teams like the Baltimore Ravens, who traditionally just pl- just pick the best available player uh, all through the draft, and traditionally they've done well. Mm-hmm. So just by sticking true to the board, uh, they've ended up with some pretty good talent, picking guys even where they already had good quality depth, and yet still get a guy who has a potential Pro Bowl season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. I like picking for the best player available at the position you need, but there is a lot to be said about best available player overall that I'm starting to think that really needs to be the way to do it. All right, give us a call at 904-701-8667. Leave us a voicemail or text message at that number or send in a message via social media and we'll share your thoughts. And now I think it's about time for another rendition of Homer Did You Know? Hey, Homer, did you know? Okay. Here is this week's question on Hey, Homer, Did You Know? Got a multiple choice question for you with three possible answers. I'm going to ask Homer and Heidi and all of our listening audience this week's question. Who holds the record for the longest Raiders interception return? Is it A, Eddie Anderson, B, Eric Allen, or C, George Atkinson? Homer, what do you think? I noticed Heidi didn't give me any hints this week, so I'm just going to go with A, Eddie (laughs) Anderson. All right, Heidi, what do you think? I'm going to go with B, Eric Allen. Homer, you are correct. Yes. What? Eddie Anderson. Eddie Anderson ran back an interception for 102 yards and a touchdown against the Miami Dolphins in 1992. Eric Allen was a great defensive back, but not quite 102 yards worth. Same with George Atkinson. But your answer, and Homer, you got it done on. Eddie Anderson is the answer this week on Hey Homer, Did You Know? And obviously, Homer, you knew. I used to kill with Eddie Anderson in Tecmo Super Bowl. No, I used to kill with Eddie Anderson in Tecmo Super Bowl. Uh, you know, I would run the ball with Bo Jackson, and I would get Eddie Anderson. I would just stuff the run, and I would—I was real good at timing the, and leaping and catching the interceptions and things like that. Oh man, my brother hated Eddie Anderson and Bo Jackson, but I loved them. There you go. All right, and that about does it for this week's episode of the Only Nation Podcast. Next week, we'll take a look at the draft and talk about where the team goes next. Please give us a call and give us your feedback on any interviews, our takes and share with us your take. We'll get you on the show. If you'd like to help support the show, buy us a hot dog at buymeacoffee.com slash onlynationpod. You can find me, Heidi Stabbert, on social media as at Kevlar Prom Dress, on Twitter and Instagram, or Heidi Stabbert on Facebook. 
All right, Raider Nation, our Google voicemail number is 904-701-8667. Leave us a voicemail or send us a text message to that number. You can also email us at onlynationpod at gmail.com, and you can find us both on Twitter and Instagram by going to at onlynationpod. We're also on Facebook and YouTube at The Only Nation Podcast, and be sure to hit like and follow wherever you catch us on social media. Subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting apps and toss us a five-star review if you think we're up to it. You can also find me, Raider Homer, on social media. Just search the Raider Homer channel .com. There you will find links to all of my social media accounts and to my and to all my podcasts on whatever podcasting app you listen to. Once again, we want to remind you how important it is for the growth of this show for us to get your input. So make sure you send us your name and address so we can send you some free Raiders swag. Call us and tell us what you want to know. Throw us an interesting nugget that we can use on one of our upcoming episodes and become a part of what we're doing here. Remember, this is the only nation and we want you to be a part of it. So call us, 904-701-8667. That's 904-701-8667. Call us now and join the Only Nation podcast family. You can find me on social media, on Twitter at T3 underscore sports 703, on YouTube at T3 Sports Guy, and on Facebook at Tom, T-H-O-M, Jones. We will look forward to seeing... I'm a geek. (laughs) And as always, we look forward to hearing from you. Until next time, everyone, go Raiders. Go Raiders. We are not just a nation. We are the only nation. Raiders. Raiders. Raiders.